Hey guys, this is the AWS workshop series and welcome to another episode. So if you like my videos, take a moment to hit subscribe, click in there and hit the bell icon to never miss any updates. So in the previous episode, we built the backend of our Misfit web application, which we have been building throughout this workshop. So right now we have a front end that is hosted in S3 bucket and served through a CloudFront distribution and a backend that is running as a container in an ECS cluster. So let's do a quick recap of our backend because we have a lot of services that our backend is composed of. So this is the VPC our backend is running in. We have a particular IP range and we have divided this VPC IP range into four subnets. Two of them are private subnet and the other two are public subnets. So in the private subnets, we are hosting our containers. Now in the diagram, this subnet and this particular subnet, both of these are private subnets. But this diagram doesn't show the public subnet where our load balancer is running on, but that's okay. So these are private subnets. So these are our containers. Now these containers are Docker containers. So in order to spin up a Docker container, we need to have a Docker image. In AWS, we have task definition. Now task definition is more or less a blueprint of our Docker container. And here we mention what are the ports that we are going to expose for our container and what is the Docker image. Most importantly, it will specify the launch type, whether this container should run on Fargate. So this is basically, you don't have to manage any compute or you want to use EC2 instances to provide compute power for running these containers. And we have chosen AWS Fargate because we don't want to manage the compute for our container. And there's another configuration that we define in the task definition is the network mode. There are multiple network modes and we mention the bridge network and AWS VPC networks are the most popular ones. And from this, we are going to use AWS VPC networking mode for our container. So with AWS VPC network mode, we can run our containers inside our VPC, particularly inside our private subnet. So that's why in the diagram, it shows the containers inside this private subnet. All right, now let's talk about how our front end is communicating with our back end. So let's say this is our front end. So the request that is generated from the front end first received to the load balancer. So we have a load balancer. Let's say this is our load balancer. Our load balancer has a set of rules rule number one, rule number two as such. Now these rules will inspect the traffic that is received to the load balancer and it will inspect what is the protocol, what is the host and the path patterns. Now let's assume this uh, application load balancer. We have other type of load balancers like network load balancer and classic load balancer. For application load balancers and network load balancers, we can configure a logical groups called target groups that the load balancer can direct traffic to if these rules matches. So we can basically specify if rule one matches, take that to the target group one. If rule two matches, take that to the target group two. If rule three matches, take this to the target group three. So we can set up these rules in order to route traffic to these target groups. Now target groups are logical groups. Each target group has some targets associated with it. Now these targets could be EC2 instances or IP addresses. Since we are using AWS Fargate to manage the compute for a cluster and we are using AWS VPC network mode, each of these containers will receive private IP addresses within the range of our private subnet. And guys, in order to launch containers in our cluster, we can use a service. So to the service, we will specify what is the task definition and what is the desired number of uh, container count that we want to maintain. So our service will make sure at any given point of time, it's going to maintain that desired number of containers that are instantiated from this task definition. Now, how are we going to connect these containers to a particular target group? So that is through a service. So we can specify this particular service must be associated with the target group number one. And we can create another service that is attached to target group two, another service target group three. So now the connection is completed. 
So as soon as a request is received to the load balance, it will check against the rules. For example, let's say it will check whether the host header is www.example.com and the path is slash users. And if that matches, it will direct to the target group one and the target group one will direct those requests to the targets that are registered under this particular service. Thereby those tasks or the containers will receive the traffic from the load balancer. So that's a quick overview. Now, when we look at our Misfit web application, we have a single target group that is connected with a service which maintain a single container or a task where our backend Flask application is running. Now, at any given point of time, we can increase this count up to two, three, four tasks or the containers. So when the load is increasing, when there's a lot of requests from the front end, our load balancer will deliver the traffic to the running containers equally. So guys, I hope this is clear. So as the next step, we are going to add a continuous integration and continuous delivery platform for our application or CICD pipeline for our application. So if you have any issues, add a comment. I'll try to answer it in the best I can. All right, so I'll see you then. Thanks.